Hey everybody, Christopher Odd here. I want to go over my thought process for how I'm going to level up my Witcher in The Witcher 2. So I've gotten to the point now where I should start investing in one of the different trees outside the training path. I've got the Swordsmanship, Alchemy, and Magic Tree all available. And what I want to do is walk you through my thought process on how I want to do that because I don't want to just spend these talents, which are limited as far as I understand, in trees that I'm not going to find the most benefit in. Now there's two there's two methods of thought here. You can either focus one tree really heavily, unlock everything, and get a lot of benefits in that specific area. And then there's the kind of balanced approach, which lets you focus on everything. And actually, I've taken a look through all of these abilities, and I've done some research on the Witcher Wiki. And I think that I found a path that I am going to favor, but I'm open to suggestions and I'm open to feedback. And if for whatever reason you stumbled on this video on YouTube and you're concerned also about how to level your Witcher, I would highly suggest you take a read through the comments because I already know that with the people that are watching this, um, they're very knowledgeable. And if what I'm saying doesn't agree with you, which is totally fine. I'm sure that the guys down below are going to have a lot of really good points to offer as well. So, here's my thought process. Uh, the first thing is looking at the training path. Now, within here, the most important things, I think, are getting these two mutagen slots. The mutagen slots are overall bonuses to your Witcher. And I probably goofed on one of my mutagens. I think I just put like a common mutagen in there, but really you should save those slots for the greater mutagens. Um, over time, those will tend to stack and just gives you some nice buffs to everything. I think that it's probably worthwhile going into hardiness level two here. I may have, um, I prob if I could have done things again, I would have skipped vigor regeneration here level one, because it's Vigor Regen out of combat. It's not very important, but it, I think it was like my first choice, which really wasn't great. Uh, I do have Dagger Throwing available. Am I going to unlock it? I don't think I'm going to. The reason why is I don't see Daggers being a viable option later in the game. I don't see Daggers getting to a point where I'm going to be able to deal a lot of damage. They do keep some range between you and whoever you're fighting, but I think your your talents are better off spent elsewhere. So I chose to go for a maximum vitality in the cha in the training tree, and I think at hard difficulty that was probably the right choice. Um, now we've got these three different trees. So we've got swordsmanship, alchemy, and magic. And what I'd like to do is look at the end of each of the tree to see if there's something that I really want there. And if there is, that will give me some direction on what I should be doing with that tree. So let's take a look first at Swordsmanship. Basically, the second last ability unlocks something like special. And then the very last ability in the tree is an overall amplification of all the previous parts of the tree. So let's take a look here. Combat Acumen unlocks group finishers. So basically, from my understanding, is a group finisher uh, lets Geralt kill it like immediately kill the three nearest enemies assuming they're all low health okay that's the key and while that does sound cool the way that i typically play is i like to isolate one or two enemies at a time and really hammer them down i'm not kind of i'm not doing damage to each enemy as i go i tend to just focus on one get them dead and then i don't have to worry about that i don't have you know, I look at it as two swords against me is better than three swords against me. So, I don't know if that's beneficial for me to go there. The final attribute in Swordsmanship is Whirlwind, which increases adre adrenaline um, resistances and chance of causing all critical effects. Now, adrenaline is something that I haven't gotten to yet, but I guess eventually I'm going to get an adrenaline bar that once I fill up, I can activate one of these kind of second to last abilities in each of the trees. That's my understanding, and I'm pretty sure that that's right. Now, there are some benefits in the sword tree, but before we go through that, I'm going to look at the, the second to last of these other trees as well. So the alchemy tree. 
Let's take a look here. Second to last is Berserk Mode. So activated once adrenaline bar is completely charged, enables generation of adrenaline when poisoned. So poison in uh, The Witcher 2 is not when an enemy poisons you. It's basically your toxicity level from drinking potions. So what's important to remember here is that if you're going to go into the alchemy tree, you'll find a lot of things that, you know, look, damage dealt when poisoned, vigor regen when poisoned. It's basically uh, reliant on you drinking a lot of potions all the time, which is good. With, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's the only way you're going to get those bonuses is if you're constantly focusing on your potion drinking. Now, Berserk Mode, from my understanding here, Berserk Mode is... Um, he, he regenerate like Geralt will regenerate vitality faster and he can hit harder so once you go into berserk mode you're going to be a little bit safer it's just like it sounds right it's like a lot of games have like a rage mode or something like that and you're going to hit harder and take less damage and regenerate faster so pretty beneficial actually I think that's something to, to look out for and then the last stage here amplification which is basically only when poisoned your adrenaline generation goes up and your damage goes up and your damage reduction goes up so all good stuff again it's focusing heavily on the previous aspects of the tree last but not least for magic we are looking at the heliotrope sign so again once your adrenaline bar fills up you can activate the heliotrope sign and basically what this does is it it's going to slow down time uh, in an area around you and you can move and regenerate vigor faster. So that's pretty huge because that lets you get into position better. Uh, that lets you just regenerate. That lets you cast signs. It just gives you a little bit of time to breathe, especially I find this, this could be beneficial when you're overwhelmed with a large group of enemies because I... I find myself in those situations kind of having to back off a little bit and then regrouping and going back in. Whereas with the heliotrope sign, you can pump that out and then make your decisions afterwards as time is slowed down. And then at the very end, all resistances go up by 20%. And at this stage of the game, I'm pretty early. So resistances aren't that important. But perhaps later, if I start facing tougher enemies, resistances will become quite important. Uh, sign damage is plus three and adrenaline generated through signs is 10%. So that's that's probably, I think, if I'm going to go for one of these um, adrenaline skills, it's probably the heliotrope sign, I think. I think it's really cool and I think it could be quite powerful. Now, that being said, if you can manage, if you focused on two of these trees, I don't think you could do it if you focused on all three. But if you focused on two of the trees, and you could get to that last adrenaline slot here uh, for Berserk Mode, let's say, in the Alchemy Tree, and then um, the Heliotrope Sign in the Magic Tree, if you build up your adrenaline, I think both will go off simultaneously once you activate it, which is cool. If you were able to get all three, maybe, um, by really being strict with your talents, then you could activate all three. Do I think that's the best approach not for me personally so what I'm gonna do is I've already kind of picked some of the talents within each tree that I think are gonna be the most beneficial for my play style and I want to run that by you guys so first of all in the swordsmanship tree there's a couple of things that are really uh, quite beneficial I think so the first thing is where is it here footwork so distance covered while dodging in battle 100%. And this is good because dodging is a very important skill in The Witcher. And if you can roll farther away, that is huge. Just to put some distance between your you and your enemy, give you a little bit of time to regroup. Very, very important. Uh, there's also this schemer here. Okay. Speed of vigor regeneration during combat is 10%. And at level 2, this goes to 40%. So 40% vigor regen during combat is huge very very good and that may be worthwhile going into okay now the way that these work they work on a branch so you have to have one of the previous skills 
um, unlocked before you can unlock the one in front. So Hardy, for example, I could go there either through Tough Guy or through Whirl, okay? So I've taken that into account as well. The next thing I would probably focus on is position here. I'd probably get one level of position so I don't take 200% damage when stabbed in the back. Reduce that to 150. I still, I'm not gonna, I don't want enemies to hit me from behind, but if they do, it's gonna be reduced damage. Then I would probably go into violence only because I have to. I don't find a lot of benefit in sword damage plus 5%. Even at level two, it's 15%. I don't think that's super beneficial. But what I do find beneficial is Whirl. So I've made comment a couple times in my playthrough that dealing with multiple enemies is difficult. And Whirl allows me to deal with those multiple enemies. Additional opponents will take 50% damage. At level two Whirl, you would actually uh, be able to deal 100% damage to all of the opponents around you, which is pretty huge, I think. Hardy is also important because you get your vitality regeneration going. And I think that um, on hard mode, vitality is just absolutely crucial. Absolutely crucial. And then the next thing I'd be interested in is invincible, which is vitality again plus 50 and damage reduction. Um, invincible at level 2 is vitality plus 150 and damage reduction 10%. So pretty good stuff. I may go into the swords path and stop at Hardy because these additional slots here just to get to Invincible I don't think are very beneficial, especially Sudden Death. Like Sudden Death is 2% chance of uh, instant kill and at level 2 it's like a 5% chance. Hardly ever is that going to happen. Like very rare. So I don't know. I think I might stop the sword tree at Hardy and maybe get another level depending on how I find that my vitality is doing. But uh, if I were to go further, I would go to Invincible. This group finisher, I don't think it's going to suit my playstyle very much, so I wouldn't go there. And that's what's cool about The Witcher is that everybody's going to play differently and you can really go through these trees to find something beneficial for you. So if I look at this, I count one, two, three, four, five, six talents into this tree maybe a couple on level two so six to eight talents um overall that's my thought process for the swordsmanship tree now let's go to the alchemy tree reminder uh, berserk mode activated once adrenaline bar is completely charged again berserk mode does sound nice don't get me wrong i think it would be beneficial to most playstyles, including my own but I really want to focus on that heliotrope sign because I think that's going to help me the most. So that being said, there are still some abilities in the alchemy tree that I'm going to find uh, beneficial. So first of all, you kind of have to start on, on one of these paths, right? So synthesis or alchemist. Now, this gets your bomb damage up and your trap damage, whereas synthesis is simply vitality. And Vitality is nice, but I think I'm getting those benefits from the other trees. The, the other thing to consider, though, is that if you want uh, Potion Duration, that could be pretty important. Uh, at level 2, Potion Duration goes to 40%. That's quite a bit. A lot of potions last like 10 minutes, 40%. That's 14 minutes for per potion. That's a lot. That's really, really powerful. Um, side effect is okay, but... 2% on, like, any anything to do with percentages is risky when it's a chance-based thing. Um, because you don't always get the benefit. Whereas this percentage, like plus 10%, is always applied, right? If you have a 10-minute potion, you're getting 11 minutes. Or at level 2, you're getting 14 minutes. So, I think that's a little bit different than going into a 2% chance to create additional mutagens. So what I would probably do on this path is go synthesis into specialization of potions and maybe go level two on this. Next we have harvester. It's not very important because I already have the, um, the herbalist gloves. And if you already have the herbalist gloves, this is kind of like a wasted point because you're getting so many ingredients as it is. Level two, you get 100% more uh, alchemy ingredients harvested. 
but you have to go here to branch out into anything else. So this one looks really cool, okay? I really want catalysis. Or I don't even know how to say this. Catalysis? Anyways, <laughs> this is huge because level one is nice. Effects of all potions taken are 15%. Negative effects of potions taken are minus 30%, okay? So it's, you're kind of neutralizing the negative effects and boosting the positives. And most of the really good potions have some negative effects. But at level two, this actually goes to 35% for the positive and it reduces the negative effects by 80%. That's huge. That's really, really powerful. And I think that's a must grab for almost anybody. If you're going to use any potions at all, <laughs> because uh, that's going to that's going to remove a lot of the negative aspects. Now, the only other two things in this tree that I'm interested in are impregnation, and I have a question about impregnation because I haven't been able to use it yet. So, impregnation is going to increase the effects of all your mutagens by 15%, or at level two, 35%. Okay. And 35% on all of your, all of your uh, mutagens is really going to add up. It really is. Now, the question I have is, does that apply to mutagens that you've already placed? Or does that only uh, apply to mutagens you place after you level up impregnation? That's the question I have, and that, that will make a difference. Because a lot of the mutagen slots don't come until later parts of the trees. And it's it will weigh on my decision whether I go to impregnation or not. Okay. But the other one I'm interested in here is Taster. It unlocks the ability to drink an additional potion. Okay. I, I assume that your toxicity level would still be impacted by that additional potion. And so you have to make the decision if you're going to go into this then do you want to unlock the additional skills that help you when you're poisoned, when your toxicity is higher? And that's definitely something to consider because if you're going to go here, you probably want to focus on your abilities that are going to increase your toxicity level. That's my thought process for the alchemy tree. So I'm, I'm definitely going to go uh, up to here into catalysis, catalysis, and probably through this path on the right. So that's four or five, depending on level two, and then maybe go into impregnation and maybe transmutation where the effects of my oils are more beneficial. Now here's where things are getting pretty interesting for me at least. I tend to favor most of the abilities in this tree, especially playing on hard. I find that you need magic to survive a lot more. I think, <laughs> but you guys, a lot of you guys that are watching are probably uh, a lot more uh, knowledgeable and a lot more experienced with this game. So hopefully you could chime in. So basically all of the, I think basically all the magic trees is, is beneficial. I really do. There's uh, the enhanced Ard sign, enhanced Axie sign. Okay. Now th what's cool about the Axie sign is it actually buffs the person or the the opponent, I should say, that you hex. So you take somebody, they get more vitality, and they deal out more damage. At level two, all of that goes up, right? It's, I think, 50 and 50 on level two. Um, sign damage plus five. I don't know if I actually need this, but at level two, it does give you a plus one to vigor, which I think when you get a vigor plus one, it's just another vigor slot. So that could be beneficial. Uh, enhanced Ard Sign, obviously. At level two, Ard Sign actually deals out damage. It's, uh, I think it's six damage. And the range is like an additional six meters and it has an area effect. So huge, like absolutely monstrous. You have to go into Enhanced Quen Sign to go anywhere else, which is interesting actually that they force you down that path. But I can see why, because it's going to start deflecting damage. And at level 2, it's actually going to deflect 50% of the damage. And it's going to last, like... It, so, level 1 gets you plus 20 seconds. And I think it's already at 20. Level 2 gets you plus 60 seconds. Like, it's insane. It's really, really good. 
Then you have, uh, you can go straight up and you can go to Vigor plus one, which is just straight up. I think you get another Vigor slot, which is pretty beneficial. If you go to level two, you get an additional one. So I think that's really helpful. Sign intensity. Now this is where I, I, it's, I find it hard to understand what sign intensity does. So this is a sign intensity plus one at level two. It's plus two in damage reduction, but I don't know if that's worth it. I think it's probably you're better off going into uh, magical vigor and then branching from there. Fatal attraction, I will definitely be investing in. Enables a hex up to two opponents. On level two, I can get three opponents. Like, huge for dealing with mobs. Absolutely massive. Uh, down here is venting, so Quen uh, transfers deflected damage to multiple targets. Huge. Absolutely. Enhanced Igni Sign, maybe. This is one that I would consider skipping. Um, I don't tend to use Igni a lot right now. Maybe that'll change depending on who I, like what kind of opponents I'm fighting. But this one is the weakest one so far, I think. Uh, which is contrasting to The Witcher 1 where it was like super powerful. <laughs> so I may skip the Igni Sign. Enhanced Erden Sign, so you can set up to two traps which is really great. If you go to level three, you can set three traps, right? Now here's what's crazy, and I don't know what this is, but the glyph enhancement, you can join traps together, uh, preventing foes from moving between glyphs. So what I think this is, is you set uh, a batch of traps, and I'm guessing that if an enemy hits one, they're gonna have to hit like all, th all three or, or both of the traps that you set. I'm not 100% sure, so I'd like some, some feedback on that, but that seems like huge for immobilization, especially against some of your faster targets or, again, when you're dealing with like a, a group, right? You've got met, uh, energy flow over here, chance of causing critical effects through signs. I'll probably skip that one. Magical life force is vitality, which is great. If you go to level two, then it's resistance is 5%. Man, not so bad. But then you get to the heliotrope sign, and this is probably worth going into um, for both both levels. So if you go to the first level, it allows you to um, build up adrenaline through your signs and use the heliotrope sign. And then if you go to level two, you get resistances of 5%, but you also uh, increase your adrenaline generation by 50% through your signs. And then if I was to get a final... Uh, like an end tree skill in one of the trees, it would probably be control over the power, which is all resistances 20%, sign damage plus three, and more adrenaline generation through signs. And I think, based on some quick math that I've done, I can probably do all those things that I set out to. And I've put a lot of thought into this. Like, I've really thought about my playing style, what's going to be the most beneficial to me, and I wanted to minimize wasted talent points because if I wanted to get something, let's say in a swords tree, I wanted to get invincible really badly, right? I have to waste a point. I have to go into sudden death, which is not that great. Precision, uh, bleeding 10%, not that great. Or chance of all critical effects plus 5%. In my eyes, not that great because it's a chance. It's not a guarantee. So. I don't know, That's those are kind of wasted points and I think I've tried to minimize that. I'm really interested to hear you guys' thoughts on this because this is a very important part because from what I understand, you're set in stone. Aside from like, apparently there's one like secret thing way down the road to be able to change your your tree, but if you're that, if you're that far into the game and you can change your, your tree, like you probably had a shitty time getting there <laughs> so I would hope that you you think through this stuff uh, before you level up your Witcher and that's my thought process so I wanted to share it with you guys I know it was a little bit long-winded but that's kind of the stuff that I think about before I start investing these points because I want to be as efficient as I can and get to the powers that I think are going to benefit me the most the other thing I have to consider is where do I go first right there's some abilities that right now would be a lot more beneficial uh, and other ones that could come later, like maybe in the swordsmanship tree, 
could come a little bit later. Whereas the magic stuff, I can start seeing like more immediate benefits. Or if impregnation becomes really, really, uh, if it, if I get the advice from you guys that impregnation really is worth it, I might consider going right to impregnation, trying to unlock those mutagen slots, um, in all the other trees or in the, particularly in the magic tree, because I think the mutagen slots come up towards the end of the trees. Um, but I don't know, maybe it's not worth it going to impregnation if I'm not going to go far in all the trees. So that's the thought process guys. Thanks for watching. And I am looking forward to hearing your thoughts as well. See you next time. Bye.